Psalm 86, verse 1, bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I'm devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Again, verses 1 and 2, bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and I trust you. You are my God. Turn to the Message Bible translation on the screen, verses 1 and 2. From the Message Bible, media is getting there. It says, bend an ear, God, answer me. I'm one miserable wretch. (laughs) Keep me safe. Haven't I lived a godly life, a good life? Help your servant. I'm depending on you. Can you tell your neighbor, neighbor, the Lord is leaning in your direction. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, God is leaning in your direction. Now say it to yourself, God is leaning in my direction. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Let me just, let me just from the onset say that this is a psalm that is written out of a place of hurt. It is a psalm that is written out of a place of hurt, a place of hurt, and the psalm is literally transitions from a hurting place to a healing place. And so this psalm is written for those that are hurting. And not only is it written for those that are hurting, it's written for those that won't help. It's written for those that won't healing. Are you listening to me? It is it is written out of a place of hurt to those that won't help, those that won't healing, and those that won't God to hear them. Are you listening to me? It is exciting, though. Don't give up on the hurting place because it's exciting because the psalmist literally transitions from a hurting place to a healing place. I want to speak directly to somebody today with a relative right now, Rima Word, to say to you that you may be in your place of hurt, but just hold on. God is about to shift you to your place of healing. Let me say it again. Let me speak to somebody. You may be today in your hurting place, but God is about to shift you to your healing place. This psalm is written from a hurting place. He he, he literally says, God, I need you to bow down. In the King James Version, it says, bow down. In some other versions, it says, incline. But in this uh, particular version, both message and New Living Translation, he says, bend. In other words, uh, I need you to, to bend towards me. I need you to lean in my direction. Or are you listening to me? He, he says, I am in a hurting place. I'm in a place that only you can get me out of. Uh, the, the Message Bible says I'm, in, I'm a miserable wretch. Uh, the New Living Translation says I'm poor, I'm needy. I, I need you to lean in my direction. This psalmist had some experience with that because the earlier psalm, Psalm 40, says that he inclined his ear unto me. David says in Psalm 40, I called on it. Yeah, I, I called on him. I, 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 I looked him up, and he inclined his ear unto me, and he brought me up. Yeah, out of a horrible pit. Yeah, and, he, and, he, and he put a new song in my heart, and he established my goings. Uh, in other words, he gave me a new star. He gave me a new beginning. I wish I had somebody listening to me that know God is a God of another chance. I really wish I had somebody in the room that can testify that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't have to ask nobody, James. I know for me that God is a God of another chance. I mean, I'm not going by what I know. I'm not going by what somebody said. I'm not even going by what I read. This is not theory. This is experience. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. Do I have a witness in here? That God is a God of another chance. 
Yeah, he's a God. He's a God of another chance, not, not a second chance. Because we, we lost our second chance a long time ago. But he's a God of another chance. He, he says, bend your ear to me. Here's what uh, the psalmist really wants. He wants God to hear what he has to say. Don't, 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 don't ignore me. Yeah, don't, don't, don't be like a Facebook request where you can confirm or ignore. Don't ignore me. I, I need you to hear what I have to say. And you got to understand the implication of the text. The implication of the text here is that uh, what he's really seeking is for God to lean in his direction. Can, can I preach for a few minutes? He, he really wants God to hear him. And so God, uh, according to the text, whenever you read all the verses, you see that he moves from this hurting place to this healing place. Because if you call on the Lord long enough, <laughs> preach, Pastor Smith. If you call on the Lord long enough, you'll eventually shift from a, from a hurting place to a healing place. I mean, I wish I had somebody. This is good news today because somebody under the sound of my voice, you've been dealing with a broken heart. You've been dealing with some pain. You've been dealing with some difficulty. You've been dealing with some pressure. You've had some burdens that's too heavy for you to bear. But I need you to understand if you hold on to your faith and if you shift from responsible faith to radical faith, God will move you from a hurting place to a healing place. Do I have any witnesses listening to me that know what I'm talking about? Pastor, I hear you because I was hurting, but now I'm walking into my healing. Yeah, I was hurting. Now let me just let me help you understand that for just a moment. You gotta believe you're healed before you can walk into your healing. Those of you that understand, we've been teaching on faith. And faith is not only hope for the future, but obedience in the now. That there are instances where our faith is responsible, resilient, and even radical. But, but you've got to understand that it's obedience in the now, which means that we ought to operate like we've already received in expectation. Y'all not helping me? I'm trying to get you out, but you got to get with me. You, you, you've got to operate like you already have it. In other words, let me help you for just a moment. You've got to call those things that are not as though they are. I wish I had somebody even this morning that can speak to your own existence. I wish I had somebody this morning that know your declaration drives your destination. When you speak it, it shall come to pass. When you speak it, you shall drive towards your destiny. When you speak it, you will come to pass. It will move you to a point of fruition. And when you speak healing, even when you're hurting. I just said something. You'll catch it on the way home. When you speak healing in your place of If I'm preaching to anybody this morning, I mean, come on, y'all. I'm preaching more than y'all hollering. Am I preaching to anybody? Am I? Anybody understand? I mean, I need some real people under the sound of my voice because I know, uh, you know, that uh, we look good this morning. Even on a rainy day, y'all look good. I understand. I, I understand. I do. I, I really know. I, I know what a good weave can do. Honestly, I know that. I know what good, good Mac makeup can do. I, I understand what a good manicure will do. I know. I, I, I know what a good whitening of the teeth will do. And so I know, I know we can make ourselves look good, but, but how many of you know you can still look good but be hurting? <laughs> Preach, Pastor Smith. I'm trying my best. I'm trying to help somebody that's hurting. How, how many of you know you can look good but still be going through? How, how, how many of you know things may look well on the outside, but on the inside you can still be in pain? You can still be under pressure. You can still be going through. People low your, they look at you and they see the glory, but they don't know. Y'all don't want no preaching today. Y'all don't want, they, they don't know the story. But, but I want to encourage somebody today that God is leaning in your direction. You, you need to understand that even when you are hurting, you need to understand that God is close to those that are hurting. 
Can, can I preach for a while here? I, I mean, the text is comforting and it helps us to understand that God knows everything. In fact, the Bible says, cast all of your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. I, I mean, you ought to not ever question whether he cares for you. You can question whether some other folk care. But you ought not ever question whether God cares because God always cares for you. Let me see if I can teach you for a moment. Really the reason, Al, that he's excited about this is because the Lord is leaning his, in his direction with his sovereign attention. If you're taking notes, you need to write that down. You may not get the attention of everybody. And one of the tools of the enemy is rejection. Just because somebody else don't want you don't mean God don't want you. Can, can I preach for a while here? I, I mean, I need some people that I'm preaching to to understand that rejection is a part of the process. And one man's treasure is another man's trash. I mean, you may not want me, but God does. So he's got, he's got his sovereign attention. So, sovereign attention. Put that on the screen. Sovereign attention. He has, he has his sovereign attention. He's saying, Francis, bend your ear to me. Lean in my direction. He, he wants his sovereign attention because he understands if he gets God's sovereign attention, he understands it comes with something. Whenever I can get God's attention, Whenever I can get his sovereign attention and the fact that he's sovereign suggests that he's God all by himself. Preach, Pastor Smith. I mean, the fact that he's sovereign means he doesn't need a committee to bless you. He doesn't need anybody else to help him bless you. He, he, he doesn't need anybody else's approval to bless you because he's God and he's sovereign. That means he's God all by himself. I wish I had somebody under the sound of my voice that know God is God all by himself. He can do what he wants to do. He can do when he wants to do it. He can do how he wants to do it. He's just God. Say, hey neighbor, he's just God. Tell another neighbor, he's just God. The psalmist says, I've got his sovereign attention. If I can just get him to lean in my direction and hear what I have to say. Jeremiah says, call on me and I'll answer. And I'll show you some mighty and some wonderful things. Are you listening to me today? He, he says, I've got his sovereign attention. Now, the fact that I've got his sovereign attention, I'm really getting ready to preach. Y'all getting ready to shout and we getting ready to leave. He says, not only do I have his sovereign attention, Shirley, but because I have his sovereign attention now, I have his supreme authority. Preach, Pastor Smith. Here's what he's saying. Let me see if I can help you for a moment. Uh, he uses two words in the Hebrew for the name of God in this passage. The name of God, Betty, is in this passage twice. And uh, in the Hebrew, he uses the name Sheila, Jehovah. And then he uses the name Adonai. Now, let me teach you for just a moment because now the word Jehovah deals with the magnitude of his authority. But the word Adonai deals with the majesty of his authority. Are you listening to me? And so he uses both words in this passage. He deals with the magnitude of his authority. In other words, uh, because the word Jehovah means I am. He, how many of you know he's the great I am? Now I could preach to midnight about him, me, and I am. Because somebody needs to know whatever you need, he is. Preach, Pastor Smith. Whatever you need, God's got it because he is the great I am. Whenever you see that I am that shows up first, in the text, whenever you look at the law of first mention, and I am shows up in Exodus 3, and when Moses is tending to the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro on the backside of the desert, there he sees the Mount Sinai, and on the Mount Sinai there's a bush that is burning, but it's not consumed. And it is there where the Lord says to Moses, take your sandals off. For you stand in a holy real estate. The ground that you stand on is holy ground. God speaks to Moses because Moses is intrigued and he's interested because the bush is burning but it's not consumed. 
Can, can I preach for a while here? And he goes on to tell Moses what to do, and Moses rejects it. And Moses says, you don't know, you got the wrong one, God. I'm a fugitive from justice. That's why I'm here in Midian. That's why I'm not in Egypt. Because if I ever go back to Egypt, they're going to kill me. Plus, I'm an Israelite by nature. Plus, I can't talk. I got a speech impediment. You got the wrong one. The Lord said, I got an answer for everything you just said. First of all, when you get back to Egypt, all of them that were going to kill you, they dead. They're not there anymore. When you go back to Egypt, you're not going to have to deal with them. Secondly, you got a brother named Aaron that can talk on your behalf. Can, can I preach for a while here? Thirdly, when you go, you're going in my authority. I wish I had somebody under the sound of my voice that know you can speak to your situation, but when you speak in the authority of God, when you speak in the name of God, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess, when you speak in his authority. Tell your neighbor, don't go with your own authority, but go in his authority. Can I just deal with that for a moment? Is there anybody that know that's power? In the name of Jesus. No, I, I need some real folk. Let me preach to this side. How many of you know there's power? In the name of Jesus. How many of you here know there's power? In the name of Jesus. Won't it break every chain? There's power in his name. He says, go in my name. I need you to go and I need you to first of all talk to the leaders of Israel, let them know that you've been talking to me. And then once you go and talk to them, you and Aaron and the leaders go and talk to Pharaoh. And what I need you to do is tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I'm sick of them. They've been in bondage. They, 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 they've, been, they've been dogged out by the taskmasters. I need you to go tell them to let my people go. I, and I need you, first of all, understand those that were going to kill you are dead. Aaron is going to be your spokesperson. And I need for you to go in my name. Well, Lord, what is your name? I am is my name. Why well, I got a feeling I'm going to shout before I finish preaching. He says, I am is my name. I mean, I am. Well, does I am have a last name? Yes, I am that I am. If I could get a bunny, I is Jehovah. Yes, I is. I'm in charge. I got this thing. I, I, I am Jehovah. You need to understand the magnitude of my authority. I'm God all by myself. I, I wish I had a witness here. And if I'm for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you. Y'all ought to just help me preach this thing. Shall prosper. Because I am who I am. I love that because what he's talking about there is that he has supreme authority. It says the magnitude of his authority, Jehovah, and the majesty of his authority, Adonai, means that not only does he have all might, but he's majestic. Oh yeah, he's majestic. And if I could just get the people to understand that you are king's king. Oh, no, I don't care how old you are. Tell your neighbor, I'm a king's kid. I mean, if I can just get the people to understand that, I'm a king's kid. Tell, tell somebody else, I'm a king's, I, I'm a king's kid. I mean, tell somebody else, I'm a king's kid. I mean, trouble don't last all the way because I'm a king's kid. And, and because I'm a king's kid, that means I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a lender, not a borrower, because I'm a king's kid. I'm Jehovah. That's the magnitude of his authority. Now, let me see if I can help you for a moment. I ain't going to preach for about 14 more minutes, and I'm through. So you better listen real good. He said the magnitude of my authority is important for you to know because the magnitude of my authority suggests that there's nothing that can come up under the sun that I can't handle.
I wish I had a few folk. I know, I know we slim today, but I wish I had a few folk that could get with me. I, I need somebody uh, that's in the room that know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, that your extremity is God's opportunity. What does that mean, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. In other words, if it's real rough for you, it's real easy for God. The bigger the mess, the bigger the miracle. When you think you're down to nothing, that's when God is up to something because the magnitude of his authority can handle my situation. Oh, can I just help you for just a moment? Let me walk through it. He's, he's got authority over every disease. He's got authority over every sickness. He's got authority over every pain. He's got authority over every problem. He's got authority over every discouragement, every depression. He's got authority over everything in your life. And the magnitude of his authority can handle your situation. Just because it's big to you doesn't mean it's big to God. He can speak to it and turn it around because of the magnitude of his authority. That word, that word Jehovah in the, in, the, in the Hebrew, we call it exousio in the Greek. And exousio in the Greek means his supreme authority. It means what the text says in the New Testament. At his name, God has given him a name, which is above every name. That at the, knee, at the name of Jesus. I'm preaching better than y'all saying Amen. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. You've got to understand the magnitude of his authority. What does that mean, Pastor? What that simply means is that you don't have to tell God how big your problem is. You can tell your problem how big God is. I wish I had somebody that know he's bigger than any problem. He's bigger than any situation. He's bigger than any difficulty. He's bigger than any sickness. He's bigger than any disease. He's bigger than any trouble. You've got to understand the magnitude of God's authority. And whenever you understand how big God is, then you can understand how big you are. Because when you're connected to God, you've got his supreme authority. Have I got a witness here? You can tread on serpents because you've got a supreme authority. You can speak to the mountain and it'll have to go in yonder's place because you've got his supreme authority. Now, am I preaching to anybody that know the magnitude of his authority? Is there anybody in the room that have experienced the authority of God? Even in your situation, have they ever experienced the authority of God on a sick bed? Have you ever experienced the authority of God in an unemployment line? Have you ever experienced the authority of God when friends turn their backs on you? Family misunderstand you. He says, I'm still the supreme authority. When the devil's on your trail, he says, I'm still on the throne. When people turn against you, I'm still on the throne. When things are not working in well, I'm still on the throne. And because I'm on the throne, all you need me to do is lean in your direction. Have I got a witness here? Is there anybody in the room that know when he leans, he comes with his supreme authority. That's the reason the psalmist is moving from a healing place to a hurting place or from a hurting place to a healing place because the psalmist discovers as long as I've got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Is it anybody here that know he walks with you even in your storm? He talks with you, even in your trouble, and you've got his supreme authority. Everywhere you go, he's still on the throne.
Well, tell your neighbor he's on the throne. We've got his sovereign attention. Yes. We've got his supreme authority. But then not only that, we have a supernatural assistance. Boy, I feel like preaching here. I mean, you need to know he's got supernatural assistance. That means it doesn't matter where you are. He's got supernatural assistance. I preached in the early morning service about guaranteed to be present. Guaranteed to be with you. Guaranteed to be there. Have I got a witness here? And I need somebody to know that no matter what you're going through, that he's always there. James Moore said it this way. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. He waited, you waited patiently in line, but God was there all the time. Now what I love about that is that because he was there, that means I got his attention. Have I got a witness here? And if you can't talk to anybody else, you can have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. Won't he hear your faintest cry? And won't he answer you by and by? I've got his sovereign attention, but I've got his supreme authority. That means he calls the shots. That means no weapon can come against me and prosper. Because God calls the shots. Is it anybody here that know the steps of a good man? are ordered by the Lord. He calls the shots. People can't stop you from being blessed. If God wants to bless you, you're already blessed. If God wants to heal you, you're already healed. If God wants to deliver you, you're already delivered. But you got to first believe that he wants to do it. Now, am I talking to anybody that want to be healed? You ought to come close to me. Am I talking to anybody that want to be delivered? You ought to come close to me. Am I talking to anybody that want victory in your life? You ought to come close to me. If you believe he's able, then he's ready to do it. Have I got a witness here? And no matter what's going on in your life, if you got his attention and you got his authority, thank God for a supernatural assistance. What is a supernatural assistance? It means when he puts his super with your natural. Do I have a witness here? And is it anybody in the room that know he will assist you supernaturally? David declares, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. Oh, all of my help comes from the Lord which made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved and he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. Now I'm getting ready to close but I need about 50 people that know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is a keeper. Why don't you tell your neighbor the God I serve is a keeper. Won't he keep you even in a storm? I'm getting ready to close but I need some witnesses that don't look like what you've been through to make some noise if you know the Lord has been good to you. If you know the Lord has made a way for you. Won't he give you assistance? Won't he walk with you? He's better than a walking cane. Won't he walk with you? He's better than a crutch. Won't he walk with you? Is there anybody here that can testify that down through the years, God's been good to me? Why don't you tell your neighbor, down through the years, God's been good to me. He's brought me from a mighty long way. Have I got a witness here? And all I'm trying to tell you is if you're going to move from your hurting place, 
to your healing place. Can I help you move? Let me see your hand. If you want to move, then if you want to move, you've got to understand that deliverance is in your prayer. If you want to move, you've got to understand when praises go up, blessings come down. If you want to move, the time will come and now is that true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Why don't you get to a neighbor? Why don't you look them in the face and tell them, neighbor, one person can chase a thousand, but me and you can chase 10,000. Have I got a witness here? Look them in the face. Tell them, neighbor, if you believe it, you can receive it. Have I got a witness here? Look them in the face. Tell them, neighbor, be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will, won't he do it? I say, God will, won't he do it? Take care of you. Won't it make you holler? Throw up your hands. High five your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, get ready. God is up to something. He's got another move. He's got another plan. He's got another blessing. He's got another breakthrough. He's coming through. Won't he do it? Do you know it? Have you tried it? Ain't he able? I say, ain't he able? Take your neighbor by the hand. Encourage them. Shake their hand like you're going to shake it off. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Tell them, neighbor, don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Say, neighbor, this shout is for you. This shout is for you. This shout is for you. This shouts for you. This shouts for you. I wish I had some waivers. This shouts for you. I wish I had some jumpers. This shouts for you. I wish I had some runners. Is there anybody in the room that know God is able to make all grace abound toward you? Won't he turn it around? Anybody know he'll take what the enemy meant for evil. And he'll work it out for your good. Won't he do it? Won't he make your enemy become your footstool? Won't he do it? Won't he make your hater become your elevator? Won't he do it? I'm through. I'm through. I said I'm through. But I need some people to help me preach. And I feel radical. This morning, I need some winners to come around me. Come on up here. I need some winners to get in my zone. Have I got a witness here? Now, if you're not a winner, don't come in my zone. Don't kill my vibe. But I need some real winners that will come in my zone and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Where my real winners at? Don't kill my vibe if you're not a real winner. But I need some real winners that know thanks be to God that gives me victory through Christ Jesus. I need some winners that know I'm going in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. In the name of Jesus, every tongue must confess. Have I got a witness here? And if you know you're a winner, you don't have to wait. Till the battle is over you can shout now praise him have i got a witness here praise him in advance is there anybody here that can help me make the sound of triumph if you know you're gonna win make a sound if you know he's delivering make a sound if you know breakthrough is here make a sound if you're coming out of debt make a sound 
If you're coming out of depression, make a sound. If he's healing your body, 